Ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the road. And remember that we said this here at the Pro Wrestling Archives. Two GPSs are better than one, but they are not the one. Okay? Now, I'm here with Alan Fenstermaker. And, Alan, I got to ask you, what was your favorite match last night on the card? I had a, I had a few favorite matches. My First of all was uh, The Undertaker and Roman Reigns versus Shane McMahon and uh, Drew McIntyre. That was a good match, too, but I'm surprised that they had that as a curtain jerker match uh, opening up the show. But what a way to open up with a bang because um, the dead man, the Undertaker, man, he's a. Yeah, need I say more? And, uh, yeah, and, they, and um, I didn't know how the match was going to go, but uh, at the end of the match, like, it looked like, yeah, the Undertaker was about to hit the tombstone on, uh, on Shane McMahon. And uh, Drew McIntyre snuck up from behind like he was about to do a Claiborne kick. But uh, Roman Reigns came out, speared Drew McIntyre, and then allowing uh, The Undertaker to get to, to get Shane. And then as uh, Roman Reigns threw Shane into The Undertaker so that uh, Undertaker could hit the, hit the tombstone pile driver for the win. So I got to say, my favorite match on the card last night was absolutely AJ Styles and Ricochet. Uh, I think... Ricochet is, is going to be a uh, future world champion very, very soon. That's that's my, uh, my humble opinion. You know, uh, I remember I was a big fan of The Rock right before he uh, got over. And then uh, I remember seeing that all happen. And it's reminding me of Ricochet right now. Um, so, I got to talk about this, Alan. Um, Paul Heyman's back. Eric Bischoff's back. And overall, it's an, a, a very exciting time for pro wrestling fans and, and you know people inside the business. And uh, I gotta say, Paul Heyman being back in South Philly Saturday night at the arena, uh, South Philly is on fire right now. I was driving around it, and it, you could just feel the pulse in the city. And I haven't felt that since the Eagles won the Super Bowl. So I mean, it, it's a big moment for Philadelphia right now. Yeah, no, like I, I saw um, on YouTube Paul Heyman in the ring at the arena, and I was like, wow, because that's that's the arena that uh, that that uh, Paul Heyman made famous. He made that arena famous with ECW, and I remember I remember uh, back in the day and um, seeing Paul Heyman back in that arena. It's like ma- it was magical. I gotta say, um, I was at a lot of them ECW shows, and Paul Heyman. Uh, used to come out and he used to do the best speeches in the world, man. He'd have you ready to go into to you know war on the front line for ECW, and um, it was always you know a very emotional experience at the arena. Um, you know, seeing these guys who worked their whole lives to finally get that chance to shine, and not only to shine but to hit it out of the park. Um, you know, b- being from Philadelphia, I gotta say ECW was the most revolutionary thing I've seen in my day out of Philadelphia, and I've seen a lot in Philadelphia. I've seen the 93 Phillies, I've seen, uh, you know, the, the, the old school WWE shows at the Spectrum. Uh, I hate to even call it WWE, but um, it's true. So, there's a lot going on in the world of professional wrestling. Now, I want to talk about what you've seen, what's the differences you've seen since Raw and SmackDown has now... Um, you know, underwent this change. Mainly, like, uh, I've seen, like, more aggression and more, like, the Attitude Era coming back. Like, I know, like, my first experience uh, watching that was the uh, first time that uh, Braun Strowman took on Bobby Lashley. Uh, I knew that was something was up in that match when um, Braun Strowman speared Bobby Lashley right through the video wall at the top. I was like, a, holy shit, holy shit. It was like back in the day, like when you, know, when you hear the crowd just do the holy shit chants or EC dub, that was like one of those moments where I was like, wow. So I got to say, man, um, when that happened, all I could really think about was Onita and those exploding cage matches because all those explosions were going off. And it was like, wow, like this is now a new era of uh, pro wrestling. And I, I want to stress this. Um, being at the show last night, I noticed something, and this is something that I hope that the people in the WWE and Vince McMahon and all of them hear loud and clear straight from Philadelphia as a, as a lifelong wrestling fan and uh, somebody who's entered the business now. Um, we, we, we need our society back. Um, the way that things have been progressing in some ways are good and in some ways aren't good. And I noticed walking around the hallways um, of the uh, event last night, we, WWE has to be the one that steals society back and is able to 
bring back the classicness of what America truly is about. And, you know, I, 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 I'm going to stay out of the politics, I'm going to stay out of the religious stuff, and right now I just want to focus on bringing uh, society back, back home where it belongs, which is just, you know, the classic American way, um, you know, with, with everything besides racism, and, um, with, you know, without uh, misjustice or corruption, I see the WWE being on the forefront and being the trendsetters of the next decade. In this Alan, what do you think about uh, the independent pro wrestling scene right now? I think the indies are good. The indies are better than ever. Like, um, I know we've been doing a lot of work with uh, CCW, Classic Championship Wrestling. I got to give out huge props to Rob Noxious, man. Rob Noxious is a true le le uh, local legend in the business, and he's definitely been places, and he's going places. Some of the stuff that he's done, and um, they call him the king of hardcore, and that's... Uh, that's the truth because I've seen some of the matches he's in and not only that but he's an excellent trainer as well like I would honestly suggest if anybody wants to train to learn how to become a wrestler look him up Rob Noxious Fort Noxious training school because he does have a lot of ta a lot of talent he's a good trainer and I, I know a couple weeks ago I trained with Chris Banks he's another indie legend in the business that's definitely going places as well as Mr. Ping another good trainer as well who had a, a WWE tryout and uh, so um, I, I wanted to bring up a couple of guys that I think uh, would be, you know, very, very uh, important to what's going on in the bigger sense of professional wrestling, and that's the Pony Express. Um, Adrian Bliss and Stefan Ramon, one of the greatest tag teams right now in the world. Uh, they remind me a lot of the, the old Arn Anderson, Larry Zbysko team when they'd really work you over in the corner and pull these kind of bar moves that uh, you would see in like a dirty bar fight, you know, where they just roll people in the corner. Um, it, it, it's been very interesting to watch them. Um, I also want to um, talk about Brian Pillman Jr., who's been all over Philadelphia lately. And i uh, got to say, he's got star written all over him. And to, for him to be able to give back to Philadelphia already by just coming up through the Indies and doing it the way that it's always been done here in Philadelphia, it's just an amazing thing to see. Um, it was good seeing him at the AEW pay-per-view. I was watching that. And... Uh, you know, he, he's going to do big things, and, uh, it, you know, all the power to him. Um, I also want to bring up uh, Bro Keller, who's, you know, I've been, in, I, I've been in the crowd watching this guy wrestle and seeing how the ladies respond to this guy. He's, a, he's like a young Shawn Michaels. Uh, the ladies love him out there, and, um, you know, I, I think that he would be a... Uh, um, He's gonna have a very shining. He's gonna have a very bright career ahead of him in this sport of professional wrestling.